begin with the impact of Melvin Jones, the second in a series of Centennial videos. We, as lions, are intensely proud of the dreamer, the doer, who conceived the idea of this organization and then proceeded to devote his entire life to the execution of the idea. For more than 40 years, Melvin Jones provided the leadership, organizational skills, tenacity, and muscle to lay the foundation for Lions Clubs International. On January 13, 1879, Melvin Jones was born in the Arizona Territory at Fort Thomas. His father was a scout for the U.S. Army. As a boy, he moved to the Midwest, where he attended school and studied law. At the age of 20, he moved to Chicago, where he sang in the Apollo Music Club and entered the insurance business. In 1913, the Melvin Jones Insurance Agency was established, and Melvin joined the Chicago Business Circle. It was a networking and social club. He served as secretary, but had bigger aspirations. What if these men who are successful because of their drive, intelligence, and ambition were to put their talents to work improving their communities? He began inviting other clubs to join into one larger service organization. His wife, Rose, a top national golfer, worked many nights alongside him. From the first meeting and convention in 1917, Melvin was the driving force in shaping Lions Clubs International. Well, we took the name Lion because it stood for courage, strength, activity, and fidelity. That was to be the platform on which Lionism was to be founded. Melvin launched the Lions magazine in 1918. He was its first editor. He kept abreast of world events and studied other organizations, knowing it would impact the future of Lions. In 1919, Melvin had the International Association of Lions Clubs incorporated. Its first office was in Melvin's insurance agency. He often worked seven days a week on correspondence, setting up the organizational structure and expanding membership. Dear Cub, we have been advised that you have become a lion. There is only one thing greater than having the privilege of being a member of a lion's club, and that is helping to build one. And he pushed hard. Word has come into the office that you are desirous of closing your charter membership with not more than 50 members. I came to the conclusion that you should have at least 100 members, or possibly 150. He started an extension program, sending organizers into the field to create new clubs. He personally attended many charter ceremonies. Nothing escaped his attention. In 1923, he outlined the charter ceremony. The presentation of the charter should be a very serious and sublime moment. Take the president's right hand, holding the charter in your left hand. Lions grew from 800 members at the end of the first convention to more than 32,000 in only six years. Melvin set the tone for the entire organization. Come right down to the thing that I've always felt probably should be first. Unite the members in bonds of friendship, good fellowship, and mutual understanding. And Melvin the tenor encouraged singing. But the Great Depression quieted Lyon's roar. Many of the 75,000 Lyons were unable to pay their dues, yet Melvin persisted, encouraging Lyons leaders to hold their clubs together and to look for new members. His plan to grow internationally gained momentum in the 1930s as clubs formed across Latin America. In 1939, the Cuban government presented Melvin with the National Merit Award, the highest award given to civilians. Traveling in every fashion, from airplane to borough back, Melvin Jones visited clubs in many lands. 
The Lions are keeping me humping, for they are now organizing a club a day, every workday of the year. He was a master of publicity, even using his birthday to promote Lions. By 1940, Lions had grown to more than 137,000 members in 10 countries. But soon, World War II presented challenges. Again, Melvin and the Lions pressed on. Lions live to make this world better, not only for this generation, but for the next. After the end of the war, there were almost 220,000 Lions in 18 countries. Writing to his nephew, an army corporal in Manila, a few weeks after the war ended, Melvin took every opportunity to expand Lions. We have been thinking somewhat of the possibility of having Lions clubs in the Philippines. We would be interested in what you think about conditions there as of the present time. In 1945, when the United Nations was formed, Melvin was invited to represent Lions. By that time, Lions headquarters was outgrowing its rented offices. So Melvin embarked on a plan to build the Lions International City, also known as Liondom. With the approval of the board, he purchased 200 acres of land 30 miles south of Chicago for a headquarters building, homes for employees, a library, schools, hotel, post office, and even a cemetery. In the early 50s, after years of lackluster financial backing and wavering support, the board terminated the project. Authority within the staff was redistributed, and Jones now shared power on an administrative committee. In 1954, Rose, Melvin's wife of 45 years, died. Melvin continued to focus on the association over the years, he was involved in every aspect of the international convention. He believed it was an opportunity to stimulate growth and enthusiasm. It was a great honor for me to ride on Melvin Jones' float. He insisted on a thrilling and inspiring international night show and key member recognition, events still part of convention today. Melvin never missed an international convention, in 1956, he arrived with his new wife, Lillian. Among the first of you to arrive was Secretary General Melvin Jones and his bride of one day. That year, Melvin reflected on his life with Lions. I have traveled many miles to bring Lions International to life. It was estimated that it might run to a figure of more than 200,000 miles per year for more than 30 years. No matter how far he traveled, Melvin always remained dedicated to his local Lions clubs. He was an active member of four Chicago area clubs. Melvin had a way of making Lions feel special. Melvin Jones inducted me into the Chicago Central Lions Club in the year 1958. Melvin was enthusiastic and he was very strong and he was larger than life. In 1958, the Lions International Board of Directors added founder to his title of Secretary General. Even this new title could not capture his enormous impact on the association. During the 1960 Chicago Convention, he was helped from his wheelchair to acknowledge the standing ovation from Lions. When Melvin died at the age of 82 on June 1, 1961, there were more than 625,000 lions in 114 countries. I hope there will always be a land of beyond for Lions International, a goal that will keep growing larger and larger as we approach it, yet will keep just out of reach, challenging us to run faster, work harder, think bigger, give more.